Well, we've looked at Doctor Who a fair old bit on the channel this year, haven't we? Um, Doctor Who, it's been an extremely popular and successful franchise, and it's expanded out from its original TV series. I mean, there's been books, there's been comics, uh, there's been audio plays to expand on the, uh, the television series, the stories and what have you. But despite being so hugely popular and successful, Doctor Who has had a real job trying to make the jump to being a successful uh, video game adaptation. Now for this video we're going to take a few looks at some of these examples, but the main focus will be on uh, Dalek Attack, a 1992 video game released by Alternative Software, a company that also had the likes of School Days in its back catalogue, and more recently has seems to be churning out endless uh, cricket and rugby games. Now at the point that the game was released it was considered to be the best Doctor Who video game ever. But that wasn't saying much. Now, years prior to the release of Dalek Attack, back in the 80s, there had been a number of official, and even a few unofficial, Doctor Who games that essentially plonked the man from Gallifrey into something incredibly simple, like um, a bad Frogger ripoff or a bad Space Invaders ripoff, or into a Tex Adventure game. Uh, and usually these would be for the uh, trusty old BBC microcomputer, uh, which is a computer that, if you're growing up in the 80s, you would often come across these in your school. Of course, none of these games actually had a recognisable um, sprite where you were playing as the Doctor. Uh, believe it or not, in some of those Doctor Who games I've just mentioned, Peter Davison was the Doctor at the time. But at no point is there any any point in, in, in any, of, any of those games where you see uh, yourself playing as someone who resembles um, the Fifth Doctor. It, it just doesn't happen. Uh, we did get that when Colin Baker um, took over from the role. As we see here, we've Doctor Who and the Minds of Terror for the BBC Micro and Commodore 64. Um, Probably the closest we got to resembling an actual Doctor Who game uh, when that came out in 1986, with an actual recognisable sprite resembling um, the Doctor, the Sixth Doctor, shall we say. Uh, I mean, I recognise those trousers anyway. And this was a platform game with puzzles in it, which seems like it's a little bit more on brand. Um, it's an attempt to put some recognisable characters in the game, such as the Daleks and K9, but because the BBC didn't own the licensing for those characters, and probably didn't want to bother chasing it down just for a computer game, we instead have these Dalek knockoffs called the Controllers, and the Doctor's robot dog is now a cat called Splinks. Splink! 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 No, Splinks. Not, not you, John. Despite looking good, it was uh, an incredibly frustrating game because the Doctor had no way of defending himself uh, and a lot of the time he had to rely on programming um, Splinks to, to do certain things for him, which was trial and error at best of times anyway, so I don't know, maybe that was the reason why when we next had a Doctor Who game he would turn out into this gun-toting, platform-jumping character. Now it should be difficult to make a good Doctor Who game. One that has the same feel and spirit of the show. Um, essentially, all you need to do really is take The Secret of Monkey Island, but with Doctor Who in it. Or perhaps a Telltale game style adventure, but with Doctor Who in it. Uh, I mean, after all, the Sonic Screwdriver is, is many things. It's been a tool, it's been a key, it's been a MacGuffin. It's been a way of getting the Doctor out of trouble seemingly all the time. In fact, seemingly far too often sometimes, um, which probably would explain why during the 80s it uh, ended up being destroyed during Peter Davidson's era, just to uh, discourage lazy writing from the BBC. Drop the sonic device. Isn't my day, is it? I feel as though you've just killed an old friend. But uh, one thing that the sonic screwdriver isn't is a bloody gun. You can tell because it's called a screwdriver. But what we've essentially got here in Doctor Who Dalek Attack is a platform-based scrolling shoot-em-up, which seems a little odd. 
The problem with Doctor Who as a video game concept is that the Doctor is not a fighter. Well, okay, apart from John Pertwee's third Doctor. But the thing is with the Doctor is that he uses his intellect to solve problems rather than using brute force, and even bringing out the old Venusian Akira is only for self-defense purposes. It's not as if doing a Streets of Rage type scrolling beat him up with John Pertwee um, dishing out judo chops and Akino takedowns is exactly going to be in keeping with the spirit of the program. It's still odd that, um, yeah, doctors, the, the, the Doctor is jumping up and down platforms collecting uh, logos of his own name and, uh, and making his way in a shopping trolley flying through London sewage works to fight off a giant two-headed robot snake. I clearly must have missed that episode of the show. So the storyline here is that Davros, who is fearful of humankind's technological advancements, has decided to invade London and turn it into a Dalek making factory. As you do. Um, the game takes us all the way back to the seventh Doctor, Sylvester McCoy, which makes sense as the game was released in 1992. Although for some reason you can also play as Tom Baker's fourth Doctor and even Patrick Troughton's second Doctor. Uh, and if a second player wants to join in, they can either play as a unit agent, or as the Seventh Doctor's tomboy explosives expert, Ace. Unfortunately, you can't have two players going at the same time, they have to take it in turns. Hmm. Anyway, it doesn't matter who you choose, the opening story vaults have all got the Seventh Doctor on them anyway. Now, it is a shame that the, the, the game is uh, somewhat off-brand of what you expect from Doctor Who, because it actually does look rather, rather good. Um, I mean, it does look better on the Commodore Amiga, which is what we're looking at here. Uh, the enemies and the Doctor all look like their TV counterparts, although I'm not sure why they appear to be Klingons in the game at one point. And at least K-9 and the Daleks can actually make an official appearance this time, because uh, previously they could not and had to have uh, bootleg copies of them done. Yes, bootlegs in an official Doctor Who game. Uh, even more modern games consoles couldn't bring us a decent Doctor Who game. I mean, did anyone really buy a Nintendo Wii just so they could play Top Trumps on it? It's telling that the best Doctor Who game at the moment is still the Doctor Who levels in LEGO Dimensions, in which you actually can play as each one of the Doctor's previous incarnations, and when you go into the TARDIS as a particular incarnation of the Doctor, the in, the, uh, the, the interior of that uh, wonderful time travel machine looks different with each uh, with each Doctor that you go in with. It's attention to detail like that that's fantastic. We do have an upcoming uh, Doctor Who game due for next year, uh, a VR experience from the looks of things, uh, a PlayStation VR experience uh, featuring Jodie Whittaker's Doctor, along with a number of returning familiar faces. Um, this might actually finally give Whovians the Doctor Who experience that they've been, uh, that they've been waiting for. Until then, um, I'm off to go jump across some platforms in, uh, in London Tower Bridge collecting uh, Doctor Who logos and, uh, and shoot some Klingons. So uh, I'll catch you later. Until next time, this is the Big Daddy D signing off. Goodbye.